It's Big Creature Week. What's up, guys? If you'd like to support our content and pick up this month's amazing proxy rewards, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to Big Creature Week. That is right. The challenge set to our Discord members this week is to create the biggest creature possible. If you would like to take part in this amazing challenge or indeed any future challenges, please feel free to join our Discord. We have a challenge submission channel for you. That is where you can submit deck lists to fit the theme. And again, this week is Big Creature Week. So the goal is to create the biggest creature possible. It does not have to be permanent and it doesn't even have to be our own creature. Creature. It can last until the end of the turn, and it could be our opponent's creature just to be fun. Uh, and we actually have that potential this time, so we'll see how that goes. But regardless, guys, this is going to be a really fun week. The winner of this week will receive a mystery proxy pack. Normally, the digital altars and proxies that we create are only available to our Patreon members, but this is the one, really the only other way uh, to actually get your hands on some of them. And we do send five random ones out to the winner uh, as a mystery pack. So if you guys would like a chance to win some of our amazing proxies, you can check out all of them at itresolvesmtg.com. And we do have a lot. So please do feel free, take a peek at those. If you're interested, this is a great way to do it. You can also check out our Patreon. The link is down below if you would like to support there as well. But without further ado, let's jump into the first deck for this week. All right, guys, we are here with Modern Uro, uh, a mainstay now of these challenge series, but uh, he put together a fantastic list. So this is very much based off of a very viable list, uh, which is focused around things like Core Spirit Dancer, Saram, Satessin Champion, these kinds of really enchantment matters kinds of cards that every time you play one, you can maybe draw a card, get buffed up, do, do some really powerful stuff. Uh, a nice little include in this. Now we've got a few, obviously Starfield Mystic and Transcendent and Envoy are both really good cost reducers for these enchantments, but even better, we have Killian Ink Duelist. We are splashing black for Killian. Uh, a 2-2 two, two for two with Lifelink and Menace that says spells you cast that target a creature you control cost two less to cast. I, I'm, I'm sorry, a creature. It doesn't even have to be one that we control. Uh, and so this really, really cheapens up the majority of our deck. Obviously, we do have six cents here, which can't be cheapened, but is very, very good. Uh, but we do have things like Ancestral Mask, Blanchwood Armor, the Enchantress's Presence, which doesn't target a creature, but does allow us to draw more cards. Hydra's Growth is in here. Spectral Steel, a nice little recursive kind of enchantment. Uh, pacifism for our opponent's creatures, but also counts towards things like All That Glitters. Uh, and then the big daddy of them all, Colossification is here as a one of, because we have to do it. We have to see if we can do it. So this is a really tried and true list. I'm really excited to jump into this one. We do have Castle Art and Veil with some tech lands like Scattered Groves for cycling, as well as Indotha Triumph. Some really nicely put together stuff here by Modern Uro. So thank you so much, Modern Uro. Let's go ahead and jump into our three games and see how we do. All right, guys, we are here for game number one, and this is a pretty easy keep, to be honest. This has, I mean, doesn't have too much in way in the way of enchantments, but it does have the core spirit dancer, which is probably what we're going to lean on here uh, because this does draw us a card as well as buff up. So the uh, the goal is definitely going to be to uh, to see if we can draw into more action as we go through. And that way, of course, spirit dancer does happen to die. We've got other options as well. Um, let's see, let's see. Let's go ahead and do this. And we'll throw out that Core Spirit Dancer. My assumption is that this may die, uh, but we do have Saram's, both of them actually, as backup, as well as Killian here, but I do think Saram is going to be the next play. Um, we absolutely need to get some card draw online, so it's going to be really important for us to do that. Um, interested to see what the opponent does here. Obviously, they do have black and green, which does make me think, you know, Heartless Act is an option. Uh, this could be a reanimator list, though. Um, they could have had Grizzly Salvage. It looks like they don't. Um, so very curious to see how this goes. Uh, my assumption is, oh, this is Slimefoot. Oh, hello. Oh, I love it. Uh, okay. Well, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and Hydra's Growth. Uh, I would love to draw a card. Thank you so much. There's an Ancestral Mask. That is very, very good. Uh, and here we just get a free attack in, essentially. I mean, they can block, but they really shouldn't. Um, 
The only downside here is if they do uh, just create tons and tons of tokens, it's going to be very difficult for us to really punch through a lot of damage. They're going to have so many blockers, it's ridiculous. So we'll see how things go. Um, but we definitely have some powerhouse stuff available to us, so I'm kind of excited. Um, now, next turn, we actually can drop Killian and then the Ancestral Mask if we would like, which is probably what we need to do here. This is going to double the counters, which is great. There is a Blanchwood armor. Uh, unfortunately, don't have an untapped land here, but we actually don't need it. So we can do this, uh, which is, again, going to cheapen up a lot of our stuff here. Um, and then here, we can probably just throw this here uh, and draw a card. Pretty straightforward. Yes, I would love to take that action. Now, crucially, this does die to some very, very important stuff in Historic. There are things like Fatal Push that we have to worry about, uh, but... We have drawn a couple cards off of it at this point, so I'm not terribly worried about it. Um, sure. Um, and now that we do have Killian out as well, if they do kill this, we still have that Killian that can gain us some life back, as well as uh, just cheapen up all of our enchantments. Now, it doesn't draw us cards, but I think that's still okay. Nice. Okay. Uh, so this is just Fungus all the way, which is... Interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, wouldn't have expected that, but I kind of like it. I like Slimefoot a lot, so I'm into it. Uh, they, it's. I'm assuming we're just reading Killian. Uh, they may not have been. I don't know, but all right. So what do we want to do? Uh, we could do a couple things, to be honest. We can Enchantress's Presence, which is going to Blanchwood Armor then onto the Killian, which is going to allow us to draw a card. I think I like that play. This just gets us more stuff on the field. It also powers up with the Ancestral Mask, worth noting, so I do think that that's worth it. And then here, we're going to throw the Blanchwood Armor here. Um, and then we draw two cards. Uh, and potentially we can get a land and another enchantment, which would be really killer right now. Uh, we do need to keep track. We have a 1214 at the moment, uh, though it should be getting larger. Okay, so no land, but that's okay. 1416 is, as of now, the strongest thing that we have. Uh, now, do we want to attack with the Killian is the trick here. Uh... I, I actually don't think so. I think we want to leave that up. I am going to attack with the 14-16, obviously. Um, they can just take this if they want, but it looks like they're not going to. They are going to do this. That's good. I'm glad we didn't attack, honestly. Um, I'm going to mark down also 14-16, uh, because that is definitely a substantial start here. So we'll see if this actually pays off. Ooh, I would love to get a pacifism. Wow, we have... Some really big stuff. Um, okay. 1820 is now a lot bigger. Um, all right. So let's do this. Um, this is going to draw us a card and all the glitters. 2022. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, does this have trample? Uh, no, it does not. Wow. I really wish we could poke through some damage here, but it doesn't look like we can. Let's go ahead and add this in. There's a pacifism, though. That's actually very solid. Uh, let's pacifism this. Just means that that can't really do that much, uh, which is great. Sure, I'll I'll draw a bunch of stuff. All right, 2426. Let me mark that. Well, I'll, I'll get there in just a second. All right, <laughs> let's... Uh, do we want to attack with this? I don't think we do. Um, it's doing a lot of work for us, so I think I want to leave that. They're obviously just going to block with something here. It doesn't really matter what. Uh, the Brackish Trudge uh, is probably a safe bet. Um, so, all right, 2426 is where we are at. And Modern Uro, that's very, very solid. Um, next turn, obviously, the idea is we'd like to get the Transcendent Envoy as big as we can get it. Uh, because it is the flying threat. So that just means that they don't, especially being a fungus deck, they really don't have a lot that can block that. Um, and so I am all for... Okay, we do get to throw that back freely, and we'll throw a Saran back because we really don't need to. All right, I'm liking it. Modern Uro, this is a strong, strong start, my friend. I am very, very happy. We do have another pacifism as well, which is pretty solid. Sure. That, I mean, that's fine. It doesn't matter, really. Um, I will happily take four. 
Don't think that really matters. Uh, all right, 32-34. That's so good. Uh, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. We're gonna throw this here first. Uh, it's gonna draw us a couple cards. There's a Spectral Steel, that's very good. Uh, and crucially, I know we can power this up, but we're gonna try and win the game. I think that that's worth it to try. Uh, we can make this thing absolutely massive, and we will, don't get me wrong, but uh, we're doing that kind of second-handedly anyway. Take action. All right, 38. <laughs> uh, let's play land. Let's play another sixth sense, just because we can. Why wouldn't we, right? Uh, take action. I wanna make sure that this actually kills is the trick here. Um, and then we have a pacifism, which we'll use on Slimefoot. And we'll draw some cards. I'm gonna decline to draw here. We really don't need to. <laughs> All right, a 42-44. That's very good. Uh, so <laughs> let's uh, let's go ahead and mark that one down. 42-44. Um, sure. We're also going to gain a little bit of life back and get them down to two. <laughs> little scary because obviously we do lose some life there, but that's not the end of the world. I am going to decline. We don't need to draw more. Um, we'll throw Scattered Groves. Let's throw Overgrown Tomb and a Transcendent Envoy. All right, so that throws those, those cards back. And uh, again, we're... We're doing pretty well. Um, the fact that this has flying is really the key here because if it if they had anything with reach, we would just be super dead. Um, but unless they have something for one black here, I don't think we're dead. Nope. All right, resolve. Got it. Uh, Fifty-eight sixty. <laughs> All right. Well, here's the goal. Now we can't let that enter untapped uh but now what we can do is actually just go crazy on core spirit dancer because <laughs> now the goal is just to make the biggest creature we can so yeah i will draw as many <laughs> 86 88 let's see how big we can get it i would love to take that action thank you <laughs> we'll play pacifism here just because it doesn't matter sure <laughs> dude uh, this is insane. I love this. We'll put a pacifism here as well. So now they just can't block. <laughs> uh, there's an all that glitters, so we'll add that. <laughs> okay, 130, 132. Technically, it would have been bigger if they had let that resolve, but they didn't. So we're taking it as is. In Modern Uro, what a strong start, my friend. A very strong start. We're gonna go ahead and jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a decent start. It's got SRAM, it's got the Starfield Mystic. I think we try for this. Um, it's not gonna be perfect, but I think what we can do is, well, we'll have some interesting shenanigans, apparent, uh, uh, theoretically. So we do wanna hit an untapped land here. Um, unfortunately, that is not one, but what this allows us to do, we'll throw a Starfield Mystic out first. Um, and we'll see how this ends up going. Uh, I'd rather this die than Saram. Uh, now that we have the Satessin champion, a little less worried about that, but I think this allows us to do theoretically the most, which is very, very good. So, uh, we'll throw you out, and now we will throw the Saram. If they had had a Heartless Act, they would have played it there, I believe, and they did not which is great for us, but they are, it looks like mono black, so we are gonna be facing quite a lot of removal, uh, which is gonna be scary, to be honest. Very, very scary. Uh, I'm gonna play the Scattered Groves here, and then we'll throw a Satessin Champion in. Um, chances are they're just gonna have another removal spell, to be honest, but this does get around Fatal Push, at least temporarily speaking, so they do have to have Okay, there's the Heartless Act. So they did have a Heartless Act. Very interesting. All right, well, we're on the game plan of playing lands and wait until we get something. <laughs> uh, if they do play any creature, that's actually okay. We've got the, the pacifism. There's a Blanchwood armor. And crucially, remember, we don't have to make the, the creature on our side of the field. So what we can do is start uh, piling on some stuff here, which I'm all too happy to do. <laughs> 
<laughs> We've made a 4-4. Yes, the opponent is probably so confused right now and I love it. All right, sure, you got it. <clears throat> um, <laughs> we made a 5-5. Five five. Um, all right, so we hold on to, I think, sixth sense, obviously. Um, and I think we just hold on to that, too. That's not, I mean, we're just going to let this slide and see how this goes. This is so funny. I, uh, I love Modern Uro that you allowed this to happen, because you specifically pointed out the fact that we can pacifism their creature and then double the counters and do this kind of thing, so I'm super into it. Uh, you know what? Screw it. We're here to have fun. <laughs> and you know what? Sure. <laughs> We're not going to win this game. There is no hope. So let's go ahead and see how big we can make the opposing creature. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love it. Sure. All right. 26-26. That's pretty solid. Uh, we'll throw out our little 1-3. Um, not super exciting, but here we go. There's a Grey Merchant. It's going to deal quite a bit of damage. Uh, yep. Interesting attack by the opponent. I wouldn't have thought that would have been the best attack, but that's fine. Um, all right, let's cycle you. Perfect. Let's make it bigger. <laughs> All right. So 4242, and I think we're dead, right? Yeah, we're super dead. All right. 4242. Modern Oro, I love it. All right. Let's jump into game number three. All right, guys. Here we are for game number three, but unfortunately, not a great hand for us. Uh, we just don't have much. Uh, no creatures, nothing like that. I'm going to go ahead and mulligan. And this is better. It's not amazing by any means, but it is definitely better. So we will keep. Um, and I think we're doubling up here. So I'm actually going to throw the Starfield Mystic back uh, and we'll lead on the Endotha Triumph. Um, not the best lead because we do have two tapped lands in hand. Oh, OK, well, that changes things. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and we will throw out I actually think we throw out the Envoy. This is going to guarantee us a little bit of damage in the air, at least. They're leading on a Plains. That does kind of make me... It lends itself very well to Mono White, obviously. So, like, we'll see. Maybe not, but I, I think it's probably uh, worth assuming that they might be on Mono White here. And, yeah, it looks like that is the case, which means having some hits in the air is about as good as we could hope here. Um, so let's go ahead and throw some damage around. Let's do it. Uh, this is going to keep them away from the dreaded 27 life total. That is a very, very scary thing uh, because of the Speaker of the Heavens, things like that. So looks like they don't maybe don't have very much this turn, which is great for us. Um, OK, interesting. Very, very interesting. All right. So we're going to throw you out. We're going to throw you out uh, and we're going to attack. So, I mean, a 6-7 is good enough to end the game pretty quickly, let's be honest. But, I mean, they very easily could have Banishing Light. They could have a lot of stuff here. The only positive for us is if they do Banishing Light on the Transcendent Envoy, we have Spectral Steel coming back, theoretically. So, you know, it, it's not terrible for us. And now, I mean, this Righteous Valkyrie is very good, but not the end of the world. We've we've got plenty of ways we can bring uh, or deal more damage than what they're able to do with the, uh, the Valkyrie. Okay. They're going to destroy that. That makes sense. I mean, that's very solid. Uh, that does kind of stop us slightly here. If we do draw an enchantment, though, we are probably in really good shape. Unfortunately, we did not. Um, the only positive is we can basically throw out our entire hand now. Um, and we pass. So when we do draw an enchantment, we are going crazy. Because um, we not only have Satessin Champion, but we also have the Core Spirit Dancer. Wow, that is very scary. Okay. Well, we're in some trouble now, uh, no doubt about that. Uh, Baneslayer Angel is terrifying. Uh, let's cycle this because we can play basically any enchantment for one. Perfect. All right, so let's get this in. I would love to take that action. Ooh, Colossification. Yes, please. Uh, and a sixth sense. That's very, very good. Okay, so what's the trick here? They could double up and try and kill. Um, which is pretty solid, let's let's be honest. Um, 
or we can hold back and potentially try ah, i don't like holding back here um they can gain a lot of life off this so i don't love that idea they're gonna deal some damage to us for sure but we dealt six to them so it's gonna be a little bit harder for them to kill uh that's very good the sixth sense though at plus colossification i mean this is all very cheap now thanks to these okay again they're they're stemming their bleeding but they're not they're not really doing the job right like they're they're killing in all the glitters they could have killed the transcendent envoy it's it is an enchantment to be clear <laughs> i don't 100 percent know why they are not but that's okay um all right, so let's get this on there. <clears throat> I would love to draw the card. Thank you so much. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so... Uh, we're going to drop another Core Spirit Dancer here. We're going to draw as many cards as we possibly can today, guys. Uh, let's throw this on this Core Spirit Dancer. Would love to draw. Um, although, nah, maybe Killian was a better option. Uh... Could have very easily seen Killian be the better option there, but that's okay. Let's attack in with these two, and we'll see what they want to do. They can block. They don't have to block. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, they're going to block there. I mean, that's something. That's one creature down. It's not a great creature to, to knock down, but it is something. Um, I would have loved... Uh, maybe Colossification was a better play that turn, just because uh, it does give such a huge buff. Um, but you know what? It's all good. It's all good. We'll see what we can do. They're going to gain five and probably deal five here, uh, but these both can't get through. Oh, they're not going to do anything. That's interesting. Um, all right, so we're going to play this. This does count as an enchantment. Um, only unfortunately drew one card there, though. Uh, this costs three. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna put it on this, actually. Pacifism. Ooh, yes, please. That is amazing. Um, alright. That's actually really good for us, because we can enchant this Bane Slayer. We'll take these. Wow, we have so many lands. <laughs> uh... Just makes it so that can't do anything. Um, all right, so we're attacking here. We're attacking here for sure. And I mean, they're not, I guess they do have to block, but like, I mean, they gotta block something here. And we win, 23-24, that is it. All right. Wow, they just took it. That's interesting. All right, let's go ahead and talk about Modern Uro's list. All right, so first of all, Modern Uro, I just want to say a huge thank you, my friend. You have been really, really good about submitting lists almost every single week. I think actually every single week, and I really appreciate it. It's great to have you on board. I love your deck list. This one was fantastic. Holy crap. To summarize, game number one, we had 130, 132. That was the biggest creature we got. Game 2, 42, 42, and game 3, uh, 23, 24 was what we were looking at. So that sets the record pretty high. 130, 132 is a very, very high record. Uh, so the goal for the next two days, uh, well, Wednesday and Friday, will be to try and beat that number. So if you would like to be a part of this, again, as a reminder, guys, Discord is the place to do it. Please check out the link down below. There is a challenge submissions channel right there for you. That's where you can do this, and you are entering to win a free mystery proxy pack. Woo, difficult to say that. Uh, five free digital alters, proxies, whatever you want to call them that we've printed out and are available to you guys. So thank you guys so much. Again, I really appreciate all the support on this challenge series, and good luck to you guys. I will see you on Wednesday.